Thank you very much, Senator Round. Senator Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, all of you, for your continued willingness to serve our country. Mr. Payne, uh, I serve as uh, the co-chair of the Defense Modernization Caucus with Senator Kramer, uh, where our focus is on driving innovation and ensuring that the United States can rapidly develop and acquire and field advanced capabilities to sustain our strategic advantage. And I'm very interested in the department's proposed shift from the traditional defense acquisition system to what it's now calling the warfighting acquisition system. And this initiative aims to accelerate capability delivery, and that's an objective that I strongly support. But it also compresses decision timelines and may reduce the visibility into individual program costs that Congress has long relied on for oversight and accountability. So, Mr. Payne, if confirmed, what specific steps would you take so the Office of Cost Assessment and Program Evaluation continues to provide Congress with clear, consistent, and auditable data across the new portfolio-based structure? Senator, I appreciate your commitment and the opportunity to, to discuss this issue. Um, as you correctly uh, have, have indicated, CAPE has an important role to play uh, statutorily in the uh, acquisition process, and that role is providing independent cost estimates prior to milestone decisions. If I'm confirmed, um, it'll be a top priority of mine to ensure that uh, we as CAPE streamline the cost reporting uh, procedures both to keep pace with uh, the accelerated acquisition process as well as to uh, make it uh, to facilitate the entry of non-traditional uh, vendors uh, in industry into the uh, into the acquisition process. Uh, if confirmed, you'd have my commitment uh, that we will deliver uh, those cost estimates uh, to you, to the committee, and to Congress. I appreciate that. Thank you. And Mr. Velas-Green, um, I recently released a uh, AI for America roadmap that lays out uh, some ideas for safe and ethical use of AI, but also how do we deal with uh, you know transition for folks to new careers and jobs and and some of the infrastructure challenges that we will face with power and water. Um, but on the safe and ethical use of AI, as competitors around the world accelerate the development of AI and uh, autonomous systems, uh, they often put in few safeguards, uh, but here in the United States, we have to both maintain a technological edge in developing this, these systems while also sustaining high ethical standards and responsible governance. I think that's critical. So if confirmed, how do you plan to shape the department's approach to AI and autonomous systems to maintain the U.S. strategic advantage in these systems while also upholding ethical standards. Senator, thank you for your leadership on this issue. If confirmed, I do commit uh, to supporting uh, the development of these systems in a way that does enhance our warfighting advantage while maintaining, as you said, uh, rightly so, our ethical uh, standards. In terms of how specifically I would go about that, I've not worked closely on this issue to this point, but I expect that I would start with working with the relevant teams to understand the requirements that this, these technologies can help us to support in an effective way, and then working from there, understand, okay, what are the different ways it can do so? How does that map against ethical considerations and making sure that we are meeting both of those targets at the same time as we elevate options for further consideration? Do you think uh, AI systems should be used as a decision maker in the kill chain? Senator, I, um, I had the opportunity to work closely with, uh, early on in my career with some of the nation's leading thinkers on where, AI, where autonomy should exist and, and the man in the loop, on the loop, out of the loop with respect to different functions. To the question of where AI can or should exist in a particular decision-making uh, system, especially as we talk about the kill chain, I think it really depends on the specifics. But again, the, the framework within which I would address this problem if confirmed is exactly the one that you offered, which is what are the warfighting requirements we seek to support? And then how do we do that in an ethical manner, uh, recognizing that both of those are very important? So it sounds like you don't have any red lines there. And, and, and certainly uh, AI and autonomous systems could help compress timelines dramatically, make faster decisions, and where to 
position forces. And I, I think we really need to consider how to, you know, quickly and safely integrate uh, AI systems into our war fighting decision making process. I think it could give us a, uh, a strategic advantage. I also think we need to be careful about uh, turning over some really key decisions, especially on using kinetic effects against you know people, targets. Um, you know, I at least right now I, I think we need to um, think long and hard about ethical implications of uh, allowing AI systems to make the decision to kill people. We thank look you. forward to reading your paper. Uh, I will send it to the office. Uh, thank you very much, Senator.